Okay, hi, we're gonna continue our approach with mathematical rigor towards another new theorem called the Morbius theorem. Okay, now you guys might be wondering why I'm sharing all these videos, but I just really hope that my website will be a place where people just come, kick back, you know, and check out what mathematical lessons that they want. Whether you miss your high school class or whether you just want to see what I can teach you out of interest, that you can just come to my website, just like how you go to any website and just learn some mathematics. Okay, I hope that I really reach that level such that I'm able to impart knowledge to you. Okay, moving on back to the lesson. Now, before we go on to the Morbius theorem, I must say one of the more one of the quite important theorems again in complex numbers. I'm really saying all the theorems are important. I really find one that's the most important. I'll let you know. We need to extend a few concepts, review a few concepts, extend a few concepts, and then use those concepts to prove the theorem. So that's quite a lot, but all in the name of mathematical rigor. Okay, the first one we have is that the magnitude of two complex numbers add up together is the magnitude of the complex numbers individually and you multiply them together like this complex number z times w take the magnitude is the magnitude of z times the magnitude of w later on we also move to the argument which is the argument of z times w is equals to the argument of z add up with the argument of w okay fairly straightforward likening that to the rules of logarithm Okay, however, we need to extend this a bit further to say whether this is true. And here. Okay, and that is the complex number to the, to the power of n, you take the magnitude, is equal to the magnitude of the complex number to the power of n. Well, one way to prove that is to use what we like to call mathematical induction. But I must say that most of the books that I read, because since we are not really focusing on mathematical induction, they quickly go through it as though the reader assumes that he knows mathematical, mathematical, mathematical induction. However, I'm going to try my best to show that using mathematical induction. So if we assume first, okay, we prove that this is true. So proposition is true, n equals to 1 implies magnitude of z is equals to the magnitude of z. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so now consider the case where we take the complex number z to the power of n plus 1 something like that okay we will write that as z to the power of n times z basically our basic rules of indices we are still inside the magnitude so this is fine okay and since it's two numbers multiplied together we can take the magni magnitude individually such as like that okay and then assume for a minute that this is true Assume for a minute that this is true, we can write this as magnitude of z n times magnitude of z, which is over here. See, we're just using, assuming this is true, just assume it first, so this can go to here, and then since this is the same number, we can write like that. So what does this mean? So assuming that this is true, it would imply that this is also true, which we have shown over here, and since this is true for n equals to 1, this would also mean that this is true for n equals to 2, n equals to 3, so on and so forth, due to the n plus 1 property over here. Okay? That's a quick mathematical induction, which is much more detailed than what you find in the books, just to let you know. Okay, and the other one, we got argument. Okay, another result, which is an extension of this over here. By looking at it, following the rules of logarithm, it also seems quite obvious that the power, we just bring it out and we times it by the, what we have inside the logarithm. However, there's a more easier way to show this much clearly. Now, n, z, complex number z to the power of n is simply z times z times z n times. Okay, basic taking to the powers, exponential, okay? And then since we got this over here, z times z is argument of z plus argument of w. So, okay, so argument of z times z is the argument z plus argument z n times. Because we got n times over here, which is equals to n times argument of z, okay? A much quicker way to show that, show this result. So let's just write this over here. We've got two new results that I just briefly show you. 
which I believe is sufficient to move on to what we call the Morbius theorem. Okay, let's just write those two over there. Okay, now the Morbius theorem, one of the perhaps names which I can't pronounce by looking at it. Okay, with no due respect to his um, work. I mean, with all due respect to his work, sorry. No disrespect, no disrespect to his name. The Morbius theorem, how it goes, it goes Z. Okay, let's just take.